Hi guys, Toba Loka here. Welcome back to the 2014 FIFA World Cup Brazil game. Now, we're not going to do an actual run on this game today. As you can see from the title, I'm going to try something a bit different. And I'm not sure if you guys will like it or not, but it was a good idea suggested by a friend on Discord. Basically, what he suggested for me to do, because I was going to simulate the whole World Cup 2022 after the draw had been made on, um, was it like tomorrow or something like that at the time of recording? Um, obviously, we don't know the teams that will go through in the Intercontinental Playoffs and the UEFA Playoffs because they've been delayed. So he suggested that what I should do is watch the matches on this game and then afterwards do another video once you've done this one and simulate the whole thing so it eliminates bias. Now, I know what you're going to say to me. The first thing you're going to say is that you're playing on 2014 World Cup game when it's 2022, you're eight years out of date. What is wrong with you? But let me just tell you something. All the teams that I need are on this game. They're not on FIFA 22, they're not on FIFA 21, they're not on FIFA 20, not on FIFA 19, you know, blah blah blah. And you could make an argument like, oh, Pez has the teams. Yeah, yeah they do, but I don't have Pez. I'm not buying Pez, I'm not spending money just so I can complete the simulation. It's not a serious, like a super serious simulation or whatever we're doing right now over the course of two videos, okay? I just wanted to make that clear because I know people will call me out for it and quite frankly it's just for fun. So what we're going to actually do today is a first on the channel is instead of simulating the game I'm going to watch the game being played by AI controlled players. There's five playoff games that, no wait, yeah, five or four, I can't remember, um, that we need to do. So the first one we're going to sort of watch together here and I'm going to highlight it for you guys is Scotland versus Ukraine um, which basically is the one that got um, you know pushed back because of the whole invasion so Scotland have to play Ukraine whoever win this match has to play Wales in the playoff final this is not being controlled by me the only thing that is being controlled by me is of course the kits and the menu selections and stuff um, I'm not gonna do anything with the squads because they are out of date so don't moan at me for if the game makes substitutions and that that is literally the game doing that not me I'm just commentating over it and um, I'm gonna put it on the highest one which is legendary um, we need to put it on a round of 16 style um, of gameplay that because the reason is if the game is a draw and it goes to extra time or penalties, then it needs to finish. Okay, so this is your first match and I'm going to try and commentate over the top of it. I will commentate over the top of the whole game, but obviously I'm going to highlight it down to the best bits to save time on the video. Um, so this is the first match, Scotland versus Ukraine. Who will win this one? Personally, I think... In real life, I think Scotland might win this game because I don't know if the whole mindset of Ukraine will be in the right place, if you know what I mean by that. Obviously, with the um, invasion um, prolonging um, this fixture, uh, it could be in the backs of the minds of the Ukrainian team. However, that could be motivation for Ukraine to actually win this game. Um, but we just don't know, do we? I mean, it's, it's a shame that we can only do this simulation on either FIFA 14 or a PES game. Um, like I said at the start, I don't own any PES games and I'm not buying any PES games just for one simulation. I think that's a bit pointless. Let's watch this and see what these two can do against each other. Ukraine on the ball, Kola Blanka here to Rotan, Rotan to Yarmolenko. The 2014 squads, of course, just like I said, take it with a pinch of salt. It's not the actual squads. There are key players missing in these um, squads that could define a match for either Scotland or Ukraine. Over the top and Anya is going through. Can he control it? He spins round into the middle. Scotland, snog grass here. Tackled by Ukraine. Is that a penalty? No, it's not. Connor Blanco over the top. A bit of a wild one. And what's happened here? Is someone injured? 
It possibly, yeah, it's Darren Fletcher who's injured, obviously doesn't feature in the, um, the squad anymore, but I guess the game thinks that there's an injury, and that could hurt Scotland's chances. Here comes Ukraine. Ukraine into the middle. Oh, why did he pass it off for? Why did he do that? That was um, a really t bad decision from Ukraine. They could have scored. Ukraine into the middle. This is a good chance. Oh, they put it wide. Again, Ukraine squander a good chance to put themselves 1-0 up in this one. It's half time and Scotland and Ukraine are still drawing nil nil. It's really cool doing this. I didn't realise actually how cool it would be. I'll have to like try and do this for the Subscriber World Cup or something. I think that would be a really good idea going forward. Connor Blanca over the top. That's a beautiful ball. Can he control it? Well, Gusiev, all it needs is a ball into the middle, but it went behind the man. Scotland and Ukraine both making subs here, changing up their team. It's interesting to see what the computer is doing against itself. Do you know what I mean? It's basically the AI playing against itself. It's a bit of a strange sort of thing to think about, isn't it? It's like if I got two controllers and plugged them in and sort of played against myself. Down to Fideski. He's got a really good chance and it's a corner to Ukraine in the dying minutes of the game. They have been pretty much all over Scotland. Scotland have had very little chances. Who will break down first, Scotland or Ukraine? It's looking more likely as the minutes pass on that Scotland will concede first. But I don't think Ukraine are taking their chances very well. They're not sort of shooting as much. They're trying to play fancy into the box. That's not what's needed. Oh, Scotland with the chance. He goes for it. Oh, it's blocked by Ukraine. Back into the box. That was a decent ball. They go for it. It's blocked again. And it's still nil-nil. Scotland could have snatched it. Uh, cut out. The defence has been so good. Cancelling each other out. And Scotland go for it. Off the post. Oh, oh, oh they could have taken it. Fletcher. Oh, that's a nice through ball, and they scored! Scotland have scored, it's Robert Snodgrass with the goal in the 104th minute to make it 1-0 against Ukraine, and they're going wild up in Edinburgh or Glasgow, wherever that is, and that is incredible. Like, Scotland were on the back foot for most of the game, and then they come up with that. That is amazing by Snodgrass, and it is 1-0 with only about 15 or 16 minutes to play. Only 15 minutes away until Scotland, maybe, might be winning this tie against Ukraine despite being on the back foot for most of the game. And some minutes tick down for Ukraine. Their World Cup dream could be over. It's cut out by Ukraine. Maybe a counter-attack, maybe. Through ball there, maybe. No. Okay, <laughs> I have to be impartial. I'm, I'm commentating. I can't tell the players what I can do. Over the top. That is beautiful. Devich. Devich, he scored! He scored in the 120th minute! I can't shout too much because it's like night time. But Devich has just done it. I don't know if he's part of the squad. I highly doubt it in 2022. But, oh, that is just a dramatic finish for Ukraine. They've rescued it against Scotland. And now they will be going to penalties. First penalty taker is Scotland with Whittaker. Can he score? Oh, nice little penalty. And the goalkeeper just misses it. Up for Ukraine is Gusiev, who hasn't really had a chance to score in this one. Can he do it? It stutters. That's quite risky, but it goes in anyway. It's 1-1 on penalties. Next one, Stephen Naismith. Can he score? Blast it into the left-hand side, and it is 2-1. Connor Blanco, you've got to think that he's putting this one away. He's put a lot of power on it. And straight at the goalkeeper, that's a poor penalty, and Ukraine are 2-1 down on penalties. Maloney, what can he do here? He's blasted it onto the bar, Scotland have missed one as well. Oh, it hits the bar again, and finally the referee gives, like says, no, it can't go in. That was some very odd animation. Here comes Timoshuk, he blasts it over the bar, Ukraine have missed another one. And um, the initiative is in Scotland's hands. Snodgrass. And he scores. Okay, well, Scotland score one more. It is over. If Ukraine miss this one, it is over. Who will take this one? I have a feeling it's going to be Scotland in this position. Fedeski. He scores. Oh, that was very, very close to the bar, wasn't it? 
Okay, Scotland, if they score this, it's over. Ukraine's World Cup dream is over if this is scored. And it'll be Scotland versus Wales in the playoff final, which is what UEFA probably want, to be honest. Fletcher off the post! Oh my god! All right, now it's Yarmolenko. He needs to score this one to keep Ukraine in this. Can he do it? I mean, both teams have missed um, penalties. Yarmolenko goes for the stutter and he scores. Is that it? I don't know. There's, oh, okay. No, it's not. Okay, cool. MacArthur now. So it's back level now on penalties. MacArthur, oh, that's cheeky. That is cheeky. Kind of shades of Perlo with that penalty. All right. It is Ukraine's turn. If they miss, they're out. They need to score to keep their hopes alive. It's the goal scorer, Devic. Come on. Let's see what he can do. He was a hero. Is he the villain? He slips over. Oh, no. He's done a John Terry. He's done a John Terry. And Ukraine have been sadly knocked out and Scotland advanced to the playoff final against Wales. What a game that was. This game did not disappoint. Right, so the final of the UEFA playoffs is going to be, according to my simulations anyway, is Wales versus uh, Scotland, which is just... I don't know, it's it's one of those fixtures where you just think, yeah, it's tasty, and you think to yourself, um, UEFA probably won it, to be honest. These sides are, um, well, uh, they are rivals, of course, because most teams in England or in the UK are rivals with each other, but it's more of like a friendly rivalry. Here we go then, Scotland versus Wales in the playoff final, the hypothetical playoff final. We don't know if that's, this is going to happen. This is all according to the game. We're just trying to find out who I should put in my simulations. Wales have got a brilliant side on this game, 2014 to 2016 or 2018, like Wales were brilliant, especially in 2016. The Euros, Wales were quality in the Euros. Okay then, Scotland versus Wales. Here we go. What is going to happen in this one? You've got to think the outstanding player for Wales will be Bale. He was in that Austria match. Over the top, Wales, they have a chance. And, oh, they put it wide. Only chance for Wales. I think that was Vokes or Church. I can't, I can't remember who the strikers were for Wales back in the time. Back down to Anya, it's cut out. You've got to think that this game will also be a tight and tense affair. These two teams are rated pretty much exactly the same. And um, it would be interesting to see a Scotland versus Wales playoff final. Um, like I said, it is the most likely scenario. Bale, can he get the cross in? He has crossed it in. It's deflected by the goalkeeper. Good chance for Wales and he scored! That was a nice volley and Sam Church. Is that his name, Sam Church? I'm not sure. But it is Church anyway. He scores to make it 1-0. I could never be a commentator, could I? Because I would just be asking, is that his name? Is that his name? Is that how you pronounce it or something? But I could never, ever be a commentator. But yeah, the header was not good enough from Scotland. And Wales volley it straight in to make it 1-0. Oh, Snodgrass is through, but he gets cut out just by the defender. That was a bit of a weird sequence of events. Wales almost scored an own goal randomly. Scotland trying to press, and it's cut out again. It's a free kick to Scotland, though, on the edge of the box. Will Maloney score this one? It's shot, and it's... Oh, that was close. Can he make something happen? Snodgrass down to Fletcher. Someone's got to shoot, surely, in these positions. Into the middle, and Scotland have scored just before half-time. And it is 1-1. They're not liking it there in Cardiff, in Wales. And, um, yeah, good pass. And Wales were completely exposed there. They should have really tightened up there. Um, you know, it was a massive gap, and he exploited it. Snodgrass proving to be... A very key player for Scotland in these playoff games. Half time, and what an exciting match we have so far. It's 1 1. Um, definitely more goals in normal time than we had in the Ukraine match. Crossed in by Wales, quite close to the goal. Oh, off the bar! Church on the ball. He gets fouled in the box, and that is a penalty for Wales. Penalty for Wales here, Scotland. A bit of a light foul, maybe a dubious one. It's not what Scotland needed right now, especially as the minutes tick down in this second half. Bale with the penalty. He has a chance to put Wales 2-1 up. He has. That's a nice penalty. And Wales have made it 
2-1 here on the score sheet. Will Scotland be able to come back in this one? Gareth Bale has put Wales into the lead here, 2-1. Scotland need to dig deep, find some character and get back into the game. That's a nice ball, but it's offside. They did score, but sadly it was cut out. Have Scotland bottled another qualifying campaign? They need a good through ball here. MacArthur, here we go. Off the post. Oh, Scotland gets so unlucky there. That is incredible bad luck. They still got another chance, though. Don't write them off just yet. Oh, no, he should have maybe turned. Here comes Anya. Oh, there's a player in goal for some reason. Maybe he was injured. There's only one minute, and Wales might take this one. Back out to Scotland, though. Scotland have still got it. High stakes, high drama in this one. Scotland have a corner in the last minute of the game. Last second, I'd say. Crossed in by Scotland. It's punched away. Headers! Oh, the defender just took it away. And is that going to be full time? It is. Wales have qualified for the World Cup. And our oh, misery for Scotland yet again. It's usually the same old story for Scotland. They just cannot make it to these tournaments most of the time. And um, it's one of their neighbours, Wales, that put them out. That is heartbreaking. But for Wales, incredible stuff. They've made the World Cup for the first time since 1958. Australia versus the UAE. Australia, of course, have qualified for quite a few World Cups recently. I'm fairly sure they've qualified for all of them um, since like 2006. UAE haven't qualified since 1990. So we're going to see how well the UAE do against Australia here today. Here we are then, our third playoff match to decide who will go through in the Asia zone to go against that fifth place spot in the Combo Bowl region. Australia versus the UAE. Who will win this one? And I'm hoping for more drama, just like in the last two games that we've had in the European playoffs. I wish I did this kind of sooner um, with the whole playoff stuff. Um, maybe we can do it for the actual World Cup. Here comes the UAE. They've got an early chance and it's saved by the Australian goalkeeper. Imagine if the UAE took the lead in the first three minutes. It seemed like it was a bit of a defensive error. And um, great save by the Australian goalkeeper. Abdul Rahman's going through. Can he score? No. He's just cut out by the goalkeeper. That's two chances for the UAE in the first eight minutes. You've got to think that maybe the UAE, um, maybe I underestimated him. Who knows? Bresciano down to Yedinak. Can he score? He shoots, he scores. What a fantastic strike that was outside of the box. And Australia had taken the lead against the UAE. It's Miles Yedinak with the goal, who I'm fairly sure still plays for Australia. UAE can't let them score from outside the box again, surely, right? Tim Cahill down to Bresciano. Crosses it in. That's not a bad ball, but it's cut out. Crossed in by the UAE. That's a fantastic ball, but it was a bit wide, unfortunately. And um, it's 1-0 at half-time. Both sides have had a good go at each other, but Australia have found the breakthrough. The crucial goal, perhaps, in this game. Chabert crossed in and oh, was saved, but it was offside anyway. I did think it was when he crossed it in. Only, well, only just, I'd say. Here come Australia. Ball into the box. It's saved. Crucial save, perhaps, for the Emirates. Lidenak pushes his way past. It's Holman. Crosses it in. That's a brilliant ball. That is a brilliant ball. And Aura, or Ua, however you say it, scores to make it 2-0, and that is a lovely finish to finish off the UAE. A very unlucky by the Emirates, really, because they did battle hard in this game, but Australia just had too much quality, I guess. That was a beautiful ball. Absolutely amazing. And, um, yeah, they just didn't pick them up on that far side, and um, Australia doubled their lead, and they're the ones that are going to be playing Peru in that playoff, that intercontinental playoff. UAE, one final attack, maybe a consolation goal. It's crossed in. Oh, I thought it was going to bend towards net, perhaps. And that is it for the Emirates. They have been eliminated in this World Cup playoff, Asia playoff.
Australia go through to the Intercontinental one. And you've got to feel for the Emirates because they haven't really been, well, they haven't been at the World Cup since the 1990s. And um, looks like they're going to be waiting a little while longer. So that leads us to the final Intercontinental playoff for Australia um, against Peru. So let's see then who will win this match. I don't know who's home and away. I'm just going to literally put Australia and I'm just going to put Peru. It doesn't really matter anyway because it's just a video game. Here we go then. Our first intercontinental playoff match. We've still got one more after this, which is obviously Costa Rica versus New Zealand. That'll be a very interesting match. But Australia versus Peru. Um, yeah, very tough one to call. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this one. Maybe in the future we can do more things like this. Good play by Peru now. Can they bag a goal just before half time? No, it's been so defensive from both of these sides. It's going to be just like Scotland and Ukraine, where it took a while for it to get going. Holman, he crosses it in. Is that an opportunity? It is! Tim Cahill scores, and that is 1 0 to Australia. And Australia now have the advantage in this playoff final. So at half time it is 1 0 to Australia. Looking good for them so far. Peru pressing. Is this a chance? No, it's screwed up by the striker. I know, I think that's Claudio Pizarro, who obviously doesn't play for Peru anymore. Um, but yeah, it was miles offside anyway. That's a good ball though. Is it still onside? It is. Oh, and he scored! Okay! And that is Guerrero with the goal. And that is 1-1. One, one. Could this match be going to penalties? Or will it be sorted out in extra time? Crossed in and it's cut out by Peru. It probably now you have to say is def well now it's definitely going to penalties. Alright, stepping up is Wilkshire. Okay, he is the man for Australia first. And he goes for the stutter and oh, is saved by the Peruvian goalkeeper's legs. And that is a missed penalty for Australia. It's Jefferson Farfan for Peru. And he blasts it down the middle. That's how you take a penalty, Australia. No like messing around or anything. It's Kennedy now. He's put a lot of power on it. And down the middle. Okay, well, they just learned from their mistakes from last time. It's Pizarro with the penalty. And, yeah, that's a decent penalty to the right-hand side. And it is 2-1 on penalties to Peru. McKay for Australia. Oh, that's a horrible penalty. That is horrible. Did he change his mind at the end? That was really bad. Here comes Guerrero. He puts it in. And Peru have a 3-1 lead already on Australia. So if Australia misses this one, it is all over. A quick penalty shootout, perhaps? Holman has the chance to rescue or ruin this run, and he rescues it. Good penalty. Very, very nice indeed. Now Peru have the chance to eliminate Australia from playoff contention and go to the World Cup back-to-back. -back. They went in 2018. Can they go now in 2022? Vargas. And he puts it wide. That is a terrible penalty. Like, those penalties are horrible. Don't do those. They're so bad. All right. Now Australia have the chance. If they miss still, then they are out, I think, because it's elimination, isn't it? It's or, and that's a, that is a disgraceful penalty. A disgraceful penalty. Like, why would you try that in that situation when you're about to be eliminated? You try flare, and it backfires massively, and Peru have taken this one. Those penalties by Australia were were not good. They really weren't, and they don't deserve to go to the World Cup based on that. Our final simulation is Costa Rica versus New Zealand. And um, this is the one that's going to interest me the most. Of course, New Zealand got here by beating the Solomon Islands 5-0. And Costa Rica got here because despite beating the US 2-0, they needed to beat the US by about five goals in order to push either USA or Mexico down into that uh, playoff spot. Remember the teams that have won these playoff games, so Wales and Peru will feature in my simulation tomorrow after the draw. So if you are here, still here in this video, in this point, then I would advise you to subscribe and um, wait for my draw video, my simulation, because I'm going to be simulating on 2014 again 
I know the squads are out of date, but um, yeah, it's just for fun. I think it's all going to be about Costa Rica in this simulation here. I think they're just going to be a bit too strong. A deflection takes it to Costa Rica. Good def uh, defending by New Zealand. And there is a chance and it's saved and he went down. No penalty though. It's quieting down a little bit now. New Zealand have had more possession but they just haven't done anything with it. Here comes Costa Rica on another attack. It's deflected out and um, it is a corner just on the stroke of half time. Usually these teams are scoring before half time and they almost tiered. And um, well, that was a big chance missed by Costa Rica there. Can he find something? No, and it's New Zealand's corner now on the stroke of half time. Can he snatch something before the interval? It's crossed in. Nobody's there though. Oh, hang on. Go on, New Zealand. And he scored. They scored. It's Christie with a goal. And what a surprise. On the back foot, the whole half. And then they get lucky like that. New Zealand have taken the lead. And that is incredible. Uh, Costa Rica were dominating in that one. But they found a way. And, um, yeah, just a bit of luck, and the goalkeeper almost made a double save. And New Zealand are leading, moving the ball around really nicely now. They've kind of taken a little bit more control away from Costa Rica. And um, you do like to see it, really, because you don't really like a team to get completely dominated. That's a beautiful ball, and Costa Rica keeper left standing. He really didn't know what to do there, but a bit of luck... And New Zealand could have doubled their advantage. Imagine that in a real-life scenario. That would have been crazy. Rojas. There's two minutes to play. You've got to think now that this is clinched for New Zealand. They've stolen this from Costa Rica. With just possession-based football. And snatching a goal at the, the end of the first half. And there it is. New Zealand to beat in Costa Rica in normal time to advance in the playoffs to the World Cup Finals, the Final 32. And that's amazing. That's probably the, the strangest result of this whole video. So the three teams that will go to the draw, my draw even, to and the simulation as well, um, will be New Zealand, Wales and Peru. So if you did enjoy this video, then give it a like and subscribe. Keep it local as always, and I'll see you again for the next video.